What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my one week follow up with the Huawei P20 Pro. I've been using it as my main daily driver along with the Galaxy S9 Plus for the last week. And I want to talk about five concerns that I have for those of you that are thinking about importing this. I know a lot of people that watch my channel from the US are really excited about this phone. And you probably have thought about possibly ordering one of these from eBay or Amazon. And it is a possibility, but there are some things to consider. So the first thing that's been a little bit of an annoyance to me, which is actually easily fixed in some ways, is the EMUI skin. Now Huawei has improved their software quite a bit over the years, and I've talked about the fact that they've simplified the settings menu, their notifications have gotten a lot better, they've now added this dark mode into the settings, which does look very nice. But there are still some things that are a little annoying about the Huawei devices. Perhaps one of the most interesting one is the way they bury some of the settings into EMUI. It's just so buried that you can't quite figure out where things are. Uh, and perhaps the biggest example of that is the always on display, which is buried really, really deep in the screen lock and password settings. A lot of people didn't even realize the phone has an always on display, but it does. It's right here. You can turn it on and then turn it on a schedule if you want. You guys can see right here. This is the always on display. But these kind of settings are sort of lost on beginners or also, you know, just intermediate users that might not know where to find things. And also there's a lot of settings like that for, for instance, power saving that are just turned on by default that you may not know to go in here and sort of turn off. For instance, these app launch settings right here, which as you'll read at the top, it says when enabled to identify specific apps and scenarios, restricts unnecessary auto launch and use targeted power saving measures, basically doing some power saving stuff in the background. Now I haven't noticed really a big difference, but some people say that with certain apps, they don't get notifications as regular as they should with other apps. And these sort of things are just unnecessary, I think, to turn on by default. It'd be better if they were there turned off by default, and then people could go in and turn them on if they want. Otherwise, in terms of the skin of EMUI, which I don't really love, you can throw a launcher on here. I'm running Nova Launcher, as you guys can see. And with the new launcher, the phone actually runs flawlessly. You don't even really notice the EMUI launcher skin itself. So that itself is not a huge problem. But there still are some software issues with EMUI to be aware of. The next one is the Netflix HD issues. I talked about this in a video I did comparing the P20 Pro to the Galaxy S9 Plus, and this issue does still persist on my device. And I'll show you guys really quick here. Actually, let me compare it to my Pixel 2 XL so that you can see it's not something that's particular to the Galaxy S9 Plus. You can notice on my P20 Pro, if I pull up a show, this show is available in HD, that it doesn't have the HD icon there. Now, if I go into Netflix on my Pixel 2 XL, and I pull up the same exact show, you'll notice that it does have the HD icon there. So you can see the same comparison I did before, HD is missing on my P20 Pro. Now, this is actually something that's specific to the model number on my device, the actual region number. So I'll go ahead and show you guys really quick. You can see that in system, and then go into about phone. You'll see right there the build number CL2 L29 8.1.0, and then in parentheses, C605. That's the region-specific model identifier, and it appears that this model, C605, does not have HD and HDR streaming support in Netflix and other streaming apps. Now, there are other models that I've confirmed with other YouTubers and other reviewers that do work with Netflix HD, but if you're importing this to the US, this is a really important thing to be aware of. If you happen to get an import unit, that has this C605, you're not gonna get that Netflix streaming, at least for now, uh, and there's really no way to enable this, which is weird because if you go into an app like DRM Info and you actually look at the Widevine level, it's L1 certified. I talked about this on Gadget Hacks. This is basically the level of certification you need to be able to stream HD content, 4K content, uh, from Netflix and other streaming providers. The P20 Pro has it, but yet the HD option is still not there on this region-specific model. I've tried to contact Huawei, but I don't know if this is gonna be fixed. It seems like it's happened in the past with region-specific models from Huawei, so we really have no idea if this is gonna be addressed. It's definitely something to be aware of if you're gonna import the device and spend all that money. The next thing is the lack of headphone jack. Now, this is becoming more common on a lot of phones, but if you want a headphone jack, it's simply not here. You're gonna to have to use the included USB Type-C to 3.5 millimeter dongle. 
Uh, if you don't mind carrying around a dongle, I guess that's fine, but I personally like the option of wired audio. That, of course, is becoming fewer and far between. Uh, the Galaxy S9 Plus does still offer that, though, so it is kind of a shame when I'm using that phone parallel with this one that I can't just plug my headphones into the P20 Pro. The next thing is the notch. So this one's actually a little more controversial because, as a lot of you probably know, if you go into the software options on the P20 Pro, you go into display, go to notch, you can actually hide the notch here, and if you do that, whenever you go into your applications, you'll see that it just sort of cuts off the top area so that it looks like something that you might have gotten last year on one of the extra tall aspect ratios with the notch completely gone. However, that loses some of the additional screen real estate and doesn't take into consideration sort of the design um, choices they made when actually creating the P20 Pro, so it really feels like you're losing part of your screen. So personally, I don't love the notch, but I've kept it enabled just because I don't want to give up the screen real estate that was sort of there in mind when they originally designed the layout. But if you don't like the look, there's really nothing you can do. You either give up some of that screen real estate or you're going to have to deal with the notch, which will remind you of the iPhone 10 and pretty much every other Android phone that's releasing this year. And the final one, which is kind of a big one, is no wireless charging. So the weird thing about this is the Huawei Mate RS, which is a $2,000 version of the P20 Pro that has the in-display fingerprint sensor as well as a rear fingerprint sensor, it does have wireless charging as well, but the P20 Pro and the P20 do not support wireless charging. Kind of a weird decision, and since I have so many wireless chargers around here uh, using the Galaxy S9 and all of the Samsung devices, it would have been nice to see the support wireless charging. Also, the iPhone 10 supports wireless charging, and uh, since Huawei went with the iPhone 10 sort of design language everywhere else, you would have thought that they would also have included wireless charging on the device. So those are sort of my biggest concerns or things that might stop you from importing the device. None of these are single deal breakers, but if you're going to spend a lot of money to import it to the U.S., you have to be aware of these facts because you're also not going to get U.S. warranty, of course. If you import it from eBay or Amazon like I did, I bought this phone from eBay, there is no U.S. warranty on the device. So if you happen to have an issue or you have buyer's remorse, you're probably going to lose money if you try to return it to the eBay seller with a restock fee. And if you have any issues down the line, you're not going to be able to easily get support from Huawei. You might want to consider a third-party warranty from Square Trade or something like that. And then also, again, just make sure that any of these considerations that you have here that I've talked about aren't things that are going to bother you down the line. Anyway, guys, those are five concerns to think about before importing the P20 Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification icon so you can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. Appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.